Um, knowing the circumstances that we were in, it was a little different. Um, you know, it wasn't the the timing was different with the, all the stuff that's going on. So, um, you know, it wasn't the way that I imagined it would happen. But um, you know, when it happened, I, you know, I was filled with emotions. Um, it was a long time coming. You know, the whole process kind of took a long time. So, you know, once it happened, it was kind of a sigh of relief. So, when it happened, kind of, what was your first thought? Because I guess. You know, when you, whenever you hear a coach get a job, they get everybody together in the locker room. They, you know, they want to have the big team meeting to make sure everybody's on the same page. How have you been able to kind of navigate that hurdle of, you know, the current times? Yeah, I still haven't even had to, ha I haven't had a full meeting with the kids. You know, I've sent some text. I've, um, you know, I've called a couple kids and I've talked to some coaches and stuff, but there still hasn't been that one large group meeting so far. So, you know, it's it's kind of in a odd situation right now. And, and the biggest thing is, you know, I don't know when I'm going to be able to have that. So, you know, that's kind of up in the air right now. So um, other than that, you know, I started a um, online thing for us to do. Um, it's not put all the way out yet, but hopefully by the end of next week, we'll be good to go on that. And I can talk to the kids a little bit more through that. Do you feel like maybe because no teams can get together, you have an advantage, or is it a disadvantage, or is it just a hurdle that you have to... You know, I was thinking about that earlier, and, you know, you have to make the most of the situation. So, um, you know, right now I'm doing a lot of the stuff that I normally would do in the summer, so I'm trying to get some of that stuff knocked out. Um, you know, you're kind of... You, you have two options. You can either not do anything or do something. So, and that's what I've been trying to tell the kids, too, you know, with, like, us not being able to get in and lift right now. Um, you know, as much as, as long as you're doing something, that's better than nothing. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing. For you, because you're so close in age to some of the guys that you're going to be coaching, does that give you an advantage, you think? Uh, especially at this time, I mean, with technology and just being savvy with all that kind of thing, does that give you an advantage in also being able to relate to what maybe they're going through? I mean, you're not that far removed from your playing days. Technology wise, I think that, I, you know, I, that is one thing that I think that, you know, I, I, I don't struggle with any of that stuff. You know, I find different ways to incorporate that um, into what we're doing. But, um, you know, being being younger, you know, I think that the biggest thing that I try to do is become a good recruiter. So I can, you know, I try to make, um, you know, my classes fun. I try to make, you know, try to tell them that, you know, football's fun. So we have a couple kids that haven't been playing football. Um, that should be so I've been trying to recruit those kids out and I'm trying to use that to my advantage Okay, so last year you was your first year on staff at Central Noble as the D coordinator What did you learn from that experience? And what are you doing to try and put your imprint to put your stamp on this football program going forward? At this time last year, I didn't even know where I would be coaching So, you know if you take a full year-long um, circle back to it, you know, I I think that um, you know, I, I would have never put myself in, at Central Noble at this time last year, but, um, you know, going forward, I, I learned a lot of stuff from Coach Tipton. Um, you know, being around football as long as he was, he, he, you know, he really taught me a lot of stuff in that short time span during the season last year. Um, you know, things that, it, it wasn't as much the football side of it that you learn. You learn more of the ins and outs of all the other stuff that goes into the football side. What's it like stepping in for Coach Tipton? He's had two stints as the head coach of Central Noble. He's the all-time wins leader in NECC uh, conference history, so it's not exactly like you're taking over for a guy who, who didn't put a lot of trophies in the trophy case. I mean, he's number one in wins all time in that conference. You know, he, he really sets the bar high, you know, and that's something that I, um, you know, I strive to be, you know, as good as him, if not better. And, you know, it, it would be different if, you know, I took over for a coach that wasn't as well known and as well um, recognized as he is. So, you know, I kind of kind of use that to my advantage and it kind of personally, you know, it sets a goal for me to, you know, strive to be as good as him. At 24 years old, I know people want to keep talking about the age, uh, but are you surprised that you're getting a head coaching chance this early or are you kind of like an old soul or how would you describe kind of your personality because uh, to hand, you know, somebody that young, the, the reins of a program uh, certainly there's a lot of confidence in you. You know, yes and no. I think that there, there's two sides of it. Uh, I don't think there's ever a, a time where you know if you're ready to be a head coach. I think that, you know, the way I look at it is I, you know, is, is, until you're in that position, you really don't know. Um, you know, I think that personally, I think I am ready. But, um, you know, I think that time will tell. And, you know, I, I think that with the coaching staff that we have and the people around me, you know, things should run pretty smoothly. You're, you know, Central Noble and Charabasco have a pretty good rivalry. Uh, I think you, did you play quarterback? Number I did. Four, 14, number 14? Yeah. And then you played baseball, number 9. Yep. Right? Uh, you didn't wear 14 yeah. both? That's crazy. Um, but what do you take from, obviously, you were on the other side of that rivalry growing up and playing for Churubusco. 
uh, but, but playing in, in this conference, playing in a similar school, playing a uh, school that you will play, uh, what kind of unique insight or feelings or thought process do you have knowing that you have that type of familiarity? You know, I think back to, um, you know, like I said earlier, this time last year, um, you know, I, I looked at the coaches that were coaching uh, for, other, for other teams and I kept thinking to myself, I'm coaching against coaches that I played against at one point. So, you know, the whole Busco Central Noble thing, it took some getting used to. Um, but, you know, their coaching staff has been awesome. They've, they've helped me a lot and they've really, um, you know, we're not, we're 15 minutes apart. So it's really not that big of a difference when you think um, scheme of things with kids. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty similar and it's what I know. So. How, how much are you looking forward to suiting up against Jared Busco? Uh, Paul Sade was your high school coach, right? Yeah. So how much are you looking forward to seeing him across the sideline and being like, okay, student versus teacher, now you guys are both on the same level? You know, it, it's one of those things that last year I didn't, it didn't really hit me. Um, you know, being defense coordinator against him calling the offense, it, it, was, it was a little different, but it wasn't, you know, full on head to head. So this year, um, that's something that, you know, I think that, you know, we, it should be a pretty good game, and, and hopefully, um, you know, we get to play them at their place. So, um, you know, my brother still plays for Busco, so that's one thing that, you know, I'm going against my brother, too. So, um, Final question for me, just uh, what does this opportunity mean to you? Um, regardless of your age, it's always cool that somebody's willing to take a chance on you as a head coach right. and uh, let you have a program and build it the way you want. What is your biggest takeaway from, from this opportunity um, that has really kind of crossed your mind that allowed you to, to kind of marinate on it a little bit? You know, we're about one week into this, and the biggest thing that I've taken away so far is that um, community-wise, I, I have full support of the community. Um, you know, I think that, you know, from all the people that are reaching out to me and, um, you know, wishing me luck and stuff like that, it's, that's probably the biggest thing. You know, I, I, I really appreciate all those people. And you look at administration and, you know, even the kids, you know, I have a lot of people behind my back. So um, that's the biggest thing. Anything else you'd like to add? Nope. So what grade is your brother?